Okay, so if you've decided to use Zoom as your screen capture method, either for asynchronous or synchronous classes or both, the first thing you're going to want to do is in your browser type zoom.us, which will take you to the Zoom homepage, which is where I am now. Then you're going to want to look in the upper right corner and see if you have the option for scheduling a meeting. If you don't see it yet, you're going to go ahead and click on my account, which will then take you um, to this page if you're already logged in, which I am. Otherwise, it'll take you to a login page where you have to use your UCR credentials and go through the multi-factor authentication um, steps to get to this page. Then in the upper right corner, you see schedule a meeting, which you can click on. And then you can schedule all of the 10, 20, or 30 lectures for your entire quarter all in one go. So it saves a lot of time. So I'm going to do that um, by setting up my meeting for my perception class. So it's like 132 lecture is what I'm going to call this. Um, you can enter a description here if you want um, something to tell your students. You know, this is going to be our, our lectures for the quarter or something like that with the dates that they'll be on. Uh, it's up to you. The description is optional. Then you're going to want to select the first date that your class is starting. So my class is Tuesday, Thursday. So I'm going to put the first day of uh, the first Tuesday of spring quarter, rather. And then my class um, starts at 12:30 uh, and goes until uh, 1:50 p.m. So I'm going to say that. Uh, they don't have an option for 80 minutes, so I'm going to put it for 90 minutes, so I have a little wiggle room at the end of class in case students want to hang around and ask me questions. I keep it on my time zone. Make sure you tell your students that so they know when they should tune in, even if they're not in California or at UCR. Then the important thing is you want to check recurring meeting um, and change it from daily to weekly, and then you get to say, uh, repeat every one week and you get to choose which days it's going to occur on. So since mine is on Tuesday and Thursday, I check both of those and then I can select the end date, uh, which for us, I believe is the first week of June is week 10. So my end date, I believe would be June 4th. Um, and then it should automatically appear. Um, oops, I unchecked it. Up here, it should tell me how many occurrences have been scheduled so I can double check that I've done it properly. I like to do it that way, uh, but you also can enter in after 20 occurrences here if you want. So it's just up to your preference of if you want to say end on this date or do this after a certain number of occurrences. Um, I'm going to for now leave off registration required because I think that'll create a whole host of headaches with students being unable to figure out how to register. I think it's just a precautionary measure to, to lessen your workload and lessen the number of emails you're going to get. Um, same thing with meeting password. I'm going to uncheck that to keep things simple. Um, I'm going to set my videos to always be on when I come in the room so students will know that I'm there. But I'm going to set participant video to off so it's not distracting to see, you know, 200, 300 student videos all on. Um, for audio, this is an important one. You want to make sure you have both telephone and computer audio enabled. So this both button checked here. So that um, in case students don't have access to a computer or internet or both, they can at least call in from a phone of some kind. It can be, um, they, they can call in that way as well. Um, and then for meeting options, I would just leave enabled join before host checked. Importantly, make sure you check this one here, mute participants upon entry, so you don't have, again, 300 students' microphones turned on and blasting in your ears. Um, you can skip enable waiting room, you can skip authenticated users, and for me, I want not only to deliver synchronously through Zoom, but to have Zoom record for me, so I'm going to check record the meeting automatically. And then you can choose if you want the files to be saved to your personal computer if you have enough space or if you want it to save to Zoom's cloud, which they will do kind of for you and send you a link that you can access the file from, which you can then post to iWorm. So I'm gonna go with the cloud because my laptop doesn't have that much storage, but if you have the storage and you want to have control over your personal files indefinitely, because um, it's a little unclear how long stuff will be stored in the cloud, um, you can choose local computer, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to leave alternative hosts blank because I only want uh, myself to be a host for now, but you could come in here and possibly add your TA's email addresses as well so that they can also be hosts of the room. 
um, that'll be important a little bit later on. So with that, you can hit save, and it should schedule all of the lectures for your particular class, which um, will then be summarized on this meeting page here. So meetings on the side, we're in this page, and I'm in the edit window for this particular lecture. So I have a couple of things I can do from here. Once I get here, I can hit start this meeting. So whenever my lecture is scheduled to start, I have to come to this page under my, um, it's under my account, which this has changed to sign out because I'm logged in now, but it's under my account and then meetings on the left hand side here and you can start the meeting um, from your particular lecture once you select it. If you want, you can add all these meetings to your preferred calendar, electronic calendar, um, to make sure it reminds you to join uh, your class and lead it synchronously. Um, and then here is the URL that you will send out to your students that they will use for the entire quarter. So it will be the same link uh, every time for that meeting. So you can post this on iLearn, you can email blast it out to them. I would say post this in as many places as possible and make sure students know that this is where they should go. Um, and then all of your options are listed here, which you've already changed, um, or you've already set rather. And if you want to change them, you can go down to edit this meeting um, and change anything that you want, like perhaps adding you know, your TAs as hosts as well. Um, so that's it for creating a recurring Zoom room. Uh, I'll have another video up for how to actually use Zoom for some of the things you might be interested in. Uh, bye for now.